Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Only the Avatar can master these four elements to save the world. But what if the Avatar was in a world with around 18 elements? Would he still be able to become a master then? Today we're doing a Pokemon Nuzlocke of Pokemon Ruby, where Aang is on a journey to become the Pokemon Master, except Aang will be played by me. For this challenge, I will only be allowed to use four Pokemon in total, and they can only be one flying type, one water type, one ground type, and one fire type to represent the four elements. To make it more complicated, I have to catch these elements in order. So first, flying, aka air, then water, then earth, aka ground, and finally fire. After the first four of each Pokemon, I can catch them in any order. I'll use other Pokemon for HMs. The rules are if a Pokemon faints, it's dead and I can't use it anymore. I can only use the first flying, water, ground, or fire type that I find on the route, so I can't get both a Talo and a Wingle on Route 104, for example. I can only have one of each type, and I can replace it with a Pokemon caught on a later route, but I can't hold more than four Pokemon at a time, excluding HM users. Lastly, I gotta name the characters after the characters on the show. If you like my style of animation and Nuzlocke, let me know by clicking subscribe. Let's go! I'm actually playing as a boy this time, so no need to convince Professor Birch that I'm a girl. I name my character Aang. I pick Trico as my starter and name him Sokka. He won't be used in fights because... You know, no bending and all. Can you still fight? Okay, three on three plus Sokka. But he'll be useful as our HM user. As a grass type, he's not usable in fights because he's not one of the four key elements. My actual starter is a Wingle I catch on Route 104 that I'm named Monk Gyatsu. Gyatsu? I spelled that wrong, I'll fix it later. There's our first air, aka flying Pokemon. Monk Gyatso sweeps Roxanne. In Duford, we catch our water type team member, a Magikarp I named Katara. Katara is pretty weak to start off with. Shoot on, water, work with me here! But she'll get way OP later once she's a Gyarados and knows how to bloodbend. Inside the cave in Duford, I catch a Geodude I named Toph. Once again, Monk Gyatso sweeps through Brawly. We make it to Slateport City, where I'm able to rename Monkey Yatsu and spell his name right. Next up is Watson. But Toph makes easy work of him with magnitude. Finally, I'm able to catch a fourth team member, a Nummel I named Zhang Zhang. Zhang Zhang? I spelled that wrong too, I'll fix that later. After making it to Fall Arbor Town, I mindlessly speed up to go back to Slateport to correct Zhang Zhang's name, when she fails to run away three times in a row and is killed! By a spinda. Am I dumb? Zhang Zhang deserted so hard that now he deserted life. Still, my team is really well equipped to handle fire types, so even without Zhang Zhang, we completely destroy Fire Nation General Flannery with Toph's magnitude powers. Afterwards, I'm able to travel into the desert where I catch Boomy the Trapinch. He's on reserve for now because Toph is proving herself to be a great team member. The team makes the long trek back to Petalburg City, where we battle Norman. At this point, Katara is a Gyarados with Intimidate, and Toph is a Graveler who resists normal moves, so I'm prepared for an easy fight. Oh shit, that's not what I meant to do. Oh shit! Shit! Misclicking and healing Toph twice instead of attacking cost me her life. R.I.P. Toph. I go to the box and pick out Boomy, the king. I teach him Rock Tomb and train him against all the flying types near Fortree City. Before battling Winona, I teach Katara Thunderbolt, Monkey Yatso Shockwave, get Boomy to evolve into Vibrava, and catch a Vulpix that I name Zuko. You will help me restore my honor after letting Zhang Zhang die to a wild Spinda. I walk into my battle with Winona with an epic strategy that is Thunderbolt, 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 Dragon Rage, Dragon Rage. And I walk out one bad ridger. I'm able to beat Tate and Liza with my patented strategy of using double surf, and I kill Groudon with the same strategy. The last gym leader is Wallace, but at this point Katara is too strong. She takes his team out with Thunderbolt and Toxic, and now I'm on to Victory Road. With Sokka by my side, I'm able to light the way through the dark Victory Road where I encounter Wally, who challenges me to a battle. Okay, Wally. 
Bumi takes out his Altaria and Delcaddy, Zuko his Roselia and Magneton, but then Wally sends out his Gardevoir. It uses Psychic against Zuko, bringing him down to low health. I switch into Monk Yatso, who takes another Psychic and is taken down to 9 HP. No one on my team can take two Psychics from this thing. I could lose right here, right before the championship, because this Gardevoir can outspeed and kill anything that I have. Unless I make a sacrifice. Monk Kiyatso looks at me knowingly and takes flight. I use the turn to heal Bumi as Monk Kiyatso makes the ultimate sacrifice for the team. Monk Kiyatso is killed by another psychic. I send out Bumi, who takes out the Gardevoir with two crunches. RIP to our starter, Monk Kiyatso. Before I can enter the Elite Four, I need to find a new airbending master. I reach into my box and I take out Yang Chen, the Swablu. Oni. Oh fuck! I train her up alongside the rest of the team and get her to evolve. Finally, we're ready. Zuko faces his inner demons by taking down most of Sydney's dark type team with fire. Phoebe goes down to a few crunches from Boomy. Glacia gets swept by Katara, who dragon dances and strengths her way to victory. Then comes Drake. This is what Yang Chen has been training for. I set up all six dragon dances against his Sheldon, then take it down with Dragon Claw. He switches into his Altaria that I put to sleep. Then he switches into Flygon, which Yang Chen takes out with two Dragon Claws. Finally, he switches back into his Altaria. Oh, he switched it out because of his major. From her first hit, it looked like Yang Chen would have taken out the Altaria in two hits. But she must have gotten a high damage hit on the first hit and a low damage hit on the second, leading to her death. I guess Drake had the superior Altaria today. Katara takes down the rest of Drake's dragons with Ice Beam. Last is Champion Steven. I lead with Zuko, who takes down the Skarmory with a few flamethrowers. Next, he sends out his ultra-powerful Metagross, but Zuko is stronger than he's ever been and takes it down with flamethrower and overheat. His clay doll is next, and I send out Katara. I use Dragon Dance to bide some time while the screens wear off. He sends out his Omado after Katara takes out the clay doll, who uses an ancient power. Katara. Our first friend, our oldest surviving teammate, goes down to the hit. A true misplay on my part. I send in Boomy, and he cleans up the rest of the team with his super effective earthquakes. Aang has become the champion of the Hoenn League. This challenge was really hard. I actually had to try it in Heart Gold, Crystal, and Emerald before trying it in Ruby. The combo of limited types and only allowing myself 4 Pokemon total made a lot of battles really difficult, but finally I got Aang all the way to the top. If you like this video, click here for more Nuzlocke challenges. If you like art, click here for some Pokemon designs. Subscribe to see other animated art and gaming content. My Discord links are also below. Thanks so much for watching! Bye!